Hello my dear doctor, so let's start, right, one of the important topic of rheumatology that is we called Sjogren's syndrome and I say that is the SJS, that is SJ for Sjogren or Sjogren you can say that is syndrome. See, this is the triple star topic of the exam and usually the questions will come up from the Sjogren's syndrome. So just follow what is written in your notes first and after that we'll discuss how we can remember all these topics and how we can apply our knowledge uh, into the questions so that we can answer our questions correctly with confidence. So let's do it. Sjogren's syndrome is autoimmune disorder affecting exocrine glands resulting in dry mucosal surfaces. It may be primary, that is we call the PSS, that is the primary Sjogren's syndrome, or secondary to rheumatoid arthritis or other connective tissue disorders. Why it usually develops around 10 years after the initial onset? So 10 years needs, that is a secondary disease to produce. Sjogren's syndrome is much more common in female. So ratio is 9 is to 1. So there is a market increase of lymphoid malignancy that is 40 to 60 fold lymphoid malignancy is increased. Features include dry eyes, keratoconjunctivitis, sika, dry mouth, vaginal dryness, arthralgia, Raynaud's myalgia, sensory polyneuropathy, and renal tubular acidosis, usually subclinical. Investigation include the remitted factor positive in nearly 100% of the patients. Already we discussed in the previous lectures on autoantibodies and remitted arthritis and remitted factors and their associations. NR positive in 70% cases, anti rho SSA antibodies in 70% patients, the PSS, anti la SSB antibodies, that is uh, in 30% patients, the PSS, sheet mask test or skin mask test, you can say whatever, filter paper near the conjunctival sac to measure the tear formation. Histology includes the focal lymphocytic infiltration and also hypergamma globulinemia and low C4 level. Management artificial saliva and tears, pilocarpin may stimulate saliva production. So my dear so Sjogren's syndrome is all very varieties and variable varieties of symptoms and the features and the investigations and management. These are really, really difficult. So let's see how the box of SS box will be helpful to remember all of these, these things together. So let's see Sjogren's syndrome. So start with the SS box, my dear. So SS box of Sjogren's syndrome, as I said, the SJS is nothing but the Sjogren's syndrome. The, the most important part of the Sjogren's syndrome is the keratoconjunctivitis sica, that is the dry eyes and dry mouth. So my dear, listen very carefully. So the sica is one of the important point and one of the important feature of Sjogren's syndrome. So our mnemonics, and my mnemonics to help you to get all the features that is the CICA, that is SS box, Sjogren's syndrome, SJS CICA will be helpful. So let's see how this SJS CICA is helpful. So yes, S for 60. This is important. I start with the S for 60. This is important. Let's see how it is important. Means the 60 fold, 60 fold or 60 times increased risk to develop the lymphoid malignancy. So once again, as for Sjogren's syndrome, 60 increased risk 60 times or 60 fold increased risk of lymphoid malignancy my dear so this is very important that's why i just put it first point of Sjogren's syndrome that you must remember my dear if i say the single point that you must remember that is really helpful in your answers and also you must to need to know about the Sjogren's syndrome is an increased risk of development of lymphoid malignancy let's first do once again now, do you see how this dynamics will be helpful? Then we'll discuss a little bit more extended points that we can discuss. So Z for once again, we can write Z for Zama. Zama means gamma. We can write Zama means gamma. So gamma means hyper gamma 
globulinemia. So this is very helpful. Hyper gamma globulinemia, my dear, this is one of the another next important point that you must remember. So once again, S for 60 and Z for Zama. Zama means gamma, hyper gamma globulinemia. And next S for once again Sika. We can write Sika syndrome that is keratoconjunctivitis. Keratoconjunctivitis Sika. We can say keratoconjunctivitis Sika means dry eyes, dry mouth and dry vagina. So this is one of the important part of Sjogren's syndrome. So once again, this triad that you must remember, my dear. So as I said, the box of the Sjogren's syndrome is the Sika, SJS Sika. So once again, S for 64, increased risk of lymphoid malignancy. Z for Zama, Gamma, Hyper Gamma, Glomidemia is one of the most important points of Sjogren's syndrome. And next point is the S, once again, that is S for Sika is the next important point, the pathognomonic features of Sika syndrome, that is keratoconjunctivitis Sika. This means dry eyes, dry mouth, and also as well as the dry mucosa, means the dry vagina. So this triad that we must remember. Next, how this Sika is helpful, let's see. Sika. So Sika stands on S for, once again, we must remember S for Schirmer's test. This test is a clinical bedside test that we can assess how much dry to what extent so that we can understand this is really a dry. S for, once again, saliva. We must remember that we need to treat the patient by artificial saliva and this artificial saliva is increased by we can write silocarpine once again this will be helpful to remember that is pilocarpine silocarpine we are writing silocarpine and next point as for SSA antibodies that is anti-rho and everybody must know already we had a lecture on autoantibodies and there we discussed about the ROSA RO for SSA ROSA anti-rho antibody and SSB that is anti-line antibody and of course limited factor anti-nuclear antibody and of course S4 we can write the S4 is reduced this is nothing but the C4 is reduced. We can write the way I'm writing, just write it down, that will be helpful. And of course, S for sensory polyneuropathy, means peripheral neuropathy. Just follow me, that will be helpful. So yes, once again, S for, what I said, S for Shima test, S for Shima test, S for saliva, that is S for Silocarpine, that is the pilocarpine, that will be helpful. S for SSA, S for SSB, the antibodies, and S for S4, that is the C4, and S for sensory polyneuropathy. So, Shima test, saliva, SSA, saliva, silocarpine, SSA, SSB antibody, S4 means C4, and sensory polyneuropathy. So, next, my dear, just follow me. Just write it down I4 infiltration. Just write it down I4 infiltration. Infiltration means yes, lymphocyte infiltration. Focal infiltration, of course. And I4 once again, just write it down increased gamma globulin. Means hyper gamma globulinemia. And I for next S I next is the C. C for C4 is reduced. Once again, C for Shirma test, we can write. The way I'm writing, just follow me, my dear. That will be really, really helpful. And last is the A for acidosis. And that is really helpful, renal tubular acidosis. We can write the way that is I'm writing. Just follow me, my dear. The way I'm writing of 
Chopin syndrome, all the clinical features that's really helpful. Let's see how it is helpful. So starting with the S I double C A Sika. So S the rule of S, you see lots of S's. Alright, yes, once again S for Shima test, S for saliva, silucarpine, SSA, SSB antibody, S for low means the C for low and sensory polyneuropathy. I for infiltration. That is the lymphocyte infiltration and I for increased gamma globulin, C for C for C for Shima test once again, and A for acidosis, that is renal tubular acidosis. So all these features all together are included with the SS box of Sjogren's syndrome, SJS and Zika. So say with me Sjogren's syndrome, SJS, SI, double C, A, Zika. So let's see, once again, S for 60, and Z for Zama, and S for Sika. Once again, S for 60, Zama, and Sika. So 60, Zama, Sika, 60, 60 fold increased risk of the lymphoid malignancy. Z for Zama, Gamma globulin, means hypergamma globulin is one of the important feature of Sjogren syndrome. And last, S for Sika. So this Sika will be helpful. The Sika syndrome, character conjunctivitis, Sika, dry eyes, dry mouth, and dry mucosa, as well as the dry vagina. So Sika, once again, this word will be helpful to remember all the features all together. So once again, as for Shima test, my dear, the clinical test that we can diagnose, there is the dry eyes uh, as well. So once again, as for Shima's test, as for saliva, the artificial saliva, and we can use that the silocarpine, that is pilocarpine, that is the one of the important features that usually come up in your exams. Next is S for SSA antibodies. That is SSA, SSB, S4 is yes the C4 and also the sensory polyneuropathy that will be very helpful. I for infiltration, I for increased gamma globulinemia, C for C4 and C for one Sigashima test and A for acidosis that are relatively acidosis. I like to discuss a little bit more. Yes, my dear S for 60, 64 that in your notes that you have seen that is the 40 to 60 fold increased risk of lymphoid malignancy and of course we have seen that there is a lymphoid infiltration here that is the lymphoid infiltration focal infiltration of lymphoid and that will be remembered to think about this lymphoid malignancy next one is the gamma globulemia this is very important my dear usually the question scenarios are given another box you can write SS box usually the scenario is given the total protein and serum albumin level so total protein and albumin level if you just deduct from total protein minus albumin so that will lead to the globulin level so if the globulin level is increased that is called the hypergamma globulinemia the first diagnosis you must to think about the multiple myeloma my dear that is very much important the second diagnosis Sjogren syndrome once again third diagnosis you put that is the autoimmune hepatitis so my dear listen very carefully this three important another box three diseases that you must to know there is hypergamaglobinemia the long list of diseases but you must remember this three important diseases which is a very very hot topic in your exam in a MRCV. So we must remember about the multiple myeloma, Sjogren syndrome, first diagnosis multiple myeloma, second diagnosis Sjogren syndrome and third diagnosis the autoimmune hepatitis in that three important diseases will get the hypergamma globulinemia. So yes, the diseases of the Sjogren syndrome, my dear, I say the Sjogren syndrome, SJS, Sika. SJS Sika will be helpful to remember all these things together. So start with the S for 60, 60 fold increased risk of lymphoid malignancy, Z for Zama, that is a gamma globulin, hypergamma globulinemia, and last S for Sika. Once again, Sika means the keratoconjunctivitis Sika, dry eyes, dry mouth, and vagina. So next point is the Sika. Once again, S for Shima's test. This test we do a filter paper, you put it here and we see the, uh, the range of millimeter that we measure usually the normal person having the 5 to 10 millimeter that the filter paper will be soaked 
but usually in case of Sjogren's syndrome, it is less than that of that. So you don't need to know about the total test of Schirmer's test. You just need to remember the Schirmer test is a bedside or a variety of tests that we can do confirm diagnosis of the Sjogren's syndrome. And next is the S for saliva. So Schirmer test S for saliva and also silocarpine. Saliva, silocarpine. And next one is the investigation that is the SSA antibody, SSV antibody, and S4 is reduced. S4 does it mean C4 is reduced. And next point, of course, sensory polyneuropathy so that you can remember. I for infiltration, that is focal lymphocyte infiltrations in the exocrine glands. This leads to the lymphoid malignancy, my dear. So next point, I for increased gamma globulinemia. I put the increased gamma and also the zama, these two times that I used these two times, this the same thing I used these two times, so you must remember this more intense. Alright, so C for C for is reduced and C for Sirma test. I put it once again, the Sirma test is a very hot topic, that's why I put it two times so that you can remember. And last is the A for acidosis. Within the bracket of RTA, means the renal tubular acidosis, you can write a separate box that will be really, really helpful. A small box, once again, SS box. We will study the renal tubular acidosis in the chapter of nephrology chapter we will see there will be the proximal and there will be the distal variety of renal tubular acidosis. But both proximal and distal variety of renal tubular acidosis is formed by one disease that you must remember that is called Sjogren's syndrome. So this box is a very, very five-star box, my dear. So this box, renal tubular acidosis, proximal and distal, both Sjogren's syndrome. Once again, the hypergammaglobinemia, multiple myeloma, Sjogren's syndrome, and autoimmune hepatitis. And next disease is the Sjogren's syndrome, SJS, Sika. It will be helpful. So thank you, my dear. I hope that you enjoyed the full diseases. And the Sjogren's syndrome will be a very, very hot topic for exam. So thank you. Thank you once again.